David versus Goliath, a QEW battle. Toronto FC will be at Tim Hortons Field on July 10th to take on Forge FC in the semifinals of the Canadian Championship. For tickets, go to forgefc.ca slash tickets or call 905-527-FORGE. This is Forge Daily with Mackenzie Barwell on the Forge Audio Network. Welcome to this episode of Forge Daily. I am your host, Mackenzie Barwell, coming to you June 24th, 2024. Forge FC with a late arrival to training this morning. A little reward, a sleep in after their 2-1 victory over Valor FC last night. Today, I'll talk about that match and share a conversation I had with Ali Hijab Rapport after practice, plus some insight into those post-match press conferences with Coach Bobby and Kwesi Poku. Now, I am going solo today, but you can expect to hear from Steve Melton a little later this week. So, without further ado, let's get this episode kicked off, beginning with a match recap. Forge FC back to their winning ways as of yesterday. Coach Bobby making two changes to the starting 11, one being Chris Colongo returning to net, and Dom Samuel replacing Malcolm Duncan at right back. Now, just 12 minutes into this game, it would be Forge FC's now traditional striker, Kwesi Poku, in behind the Valor back line. Chaos in the opposing 18-yard box, and Kyle Becker finds Kwesi out of the corner of his eye, sneaks it in behind, and Kwesi finishing off of, I think, two touches. Now, at first glance, this looked offside, but if you watch the replay, you'd know that the ref made a close but very accurate call. One Valor defender right in line with Kwesi, allowing Forge to go up 1-0 early on. Kwesi Poku not done yet, though. Almost 20 minutes later, Benny Batabanga putting pressure on the opposing defense. The ball would come loose after a tackle that he made. And Kwesi, he's the first to react. He's able to take a couple touches and then chip it over the Valor goalkeeper. This one was a little confusing at first as well because it went bar down and you couldn't tell whether it was Kwesi to put it in or the Valor defender. However, upon the replay again, you can tell that it was Kwesi's goal and that would be his third on the season now tying him with both Benny Batabanga and Tristan Borges for most goals scored on this 2024 Forge roster. So, again, going back to this game, Forge comfortable lead into halftime. They're up 2-0 by this point. Looking at second-half action now, a lot going on for either side. Credit to Valor, they definitely came out stronger in the second 45 minutes. However, no results until the 70th minute when Valor's Antonoglu was able to show off his pace and get around Alex Hashimoto Janssen to find the end of a through ball. He would take a chance himself. His shot is deflected off of goalkeeper Chris Colongo right to his left. And unfortunately, Valor's Abdul Banade waiting for it and he would bury a goal on an empty net. So the lead was cut to half, but that would be all of the scoring we saw for this game, despite what some might call a golden opportunity for Nana Ampuma. Of course, this was his debut at home, but unable to finish off a cutback ball from Benny Batabanga. He'll have plenty more chances, though, throughout the season, so I look forward to seeing those. So Forge FC walk away with the three points. Their record now changes to five wins, two draws, and three losses. Here's what Ali Hajabrapur had to say this morning about what some of the key points of emphasis were for this team going into the Valor matchup and how he thought they were able to execute them. Uh, yeah, I thought we did our tactical plan well. We did a couple things different. I think we had a good majority of the game. I think we had created a lot of chances, which is always like what we try to, you know, see after the game if we've done well. That's kind of what we, we're an attacking team, right? So we want to see how many goal scoring chances we've created. I think we've done a lot. I think we've created a lot of big chances. I think we could obviously be a little more clinical in front of goal. I think we can see that from a global view that that's the hardest part of the game is finishing touch. But I think, I think we're trending in a good direction. I think the team is starting to now, we're a third into the season and this game will just increase that confidence we have in terms of creating chances. Okay, well, you talked about making, being more clinical and looking at the stats. Shots on target were in favor of your team 6-3. to three. You also had 57% possession. So do you think that this 2-1 score was reflective of how the game went? Yeah, I mean, those two stats are, are obviously big stats that everyone looks at, the possession, the shots on goal, the XG, or whatever you want to call it, those things. Um and stats do play a part in how we look at the game. And I think if you just eyeball the game as well, we feel pretty good about the game. Maybe we could have had a, a few more goals, but football is a crazy sport and it's back and forth. And 
one little thing could change the complete dynamic of the game. So stats do play a part, but to be honest, you just have to play every moment of the game. That's the that's the way you got to look at it. Looking at those full-time stats a little more in depth, Forge FC with 12 shots relative to Valor's 14. As I mentioned, though, Forge with six shots on target relative to Valor's three. One other one I think worth noting is tackles, and it was 20-12 to 12 in favor of Forge. Mind you, as I emphasized earlier, Valor able to come up with some force in that second half, so I did ask Allie how he felt the team responded to that and how he feels this win will set the tone ahead of their match against Atletico Ottawa. Yeah, they did. I mean, as I said, there's two teams in the football game. You're not going to have the ball the whole game, and they came out strong in that second half. Um, put a little bit of pressure on our buildup, which caused us some problems. I think we were able to catch them a couple times with quick buildups and creating like counterattack opportunities. I think we can do a good job of finishing, which might make the rest of the game easier for us. But there are times in a game where you have to you have to suffer, and I think we did an okay job of suffering, if that makes sense, and not allowing them to have any big opportunities, maybe besides the goal they scored. So. I think we can come away with some confidence on the defensive end as well. Yeah, I think it's important. I think this game gets us closer to them in the table. I think those three points really give us confidence and we have a a good chance of not jumping them. Obviously, there's still a gap, but you see like a six-point swing kind of being between the teams. And I think it's going to be a fun game. These are the games you want to play, bigger games that are fighting for, you know, first place. And went there the first time and didn't do well so the revenge is maybe a little bit on our mind and we want to put in a good performance in front of always a good crowd there and against a good opponent so it'll be a fun one coach bobby shared some words at the post-match press conference here's what he had to say on the overall match and what he made of koisi poku's standout performance yeah i like the first 70 minutes i think we could have a lot more goals on the board and and yeah we're ruthless in creating uh, we need to be ruthless in finishing. Um, that's important in, in games where, where you have uh, total control um, and you're creating opportunities. You need to make sure you, uh, you increase that distance from your opponent because um, mm-hmm. in these types of games, you're, you know, you're always one play for making it interesting and the game got interesting after the 70th minute. Yeah, I think the, <laughs> the confidence in, in, uh, of what he's doing there, uh, being more comfortable, um, playing there and then just uh, constantly trying to get better at certain things, yeah, you know, through through training itself, through his uh, discussions we're having with the coaching uh, team. You know, he's he's got a lot of intelligence uh, to play that position. It's, yeah, something, like I said, we thought of in the past, and here you go, he's he's playing it, and he's he's done a very good job. But I think his work rate's been, <laughs> been excellent there. And like I've said, you know, he's probably one of the best players on the team at finishing it in and around the goal um, through all his years here. Um, now he's showing it a little bit closer in the central axis and closer to the goal. Kwesi Poku, Gatorade performer of the match. He had two goals for himself, but he also recorded four shots and three chances created. So here's what he had to say on how his new role is playing to his strengths. Yeah, I think I've always thought of myself as more of an attacker. Um, and the striker role just plays to my um, my strengths. And um, uh, versatility is one of my strongest assets, uh, I feel like. I can affect the game anywhere on the field. And uh, it's good to be a nine now and show that I can also score goals as well. Yeah, it's just uh, something I work on in training, always uh, lofting the goalkeeper. Um, Before, I just decided to take a chance on um, Antonoglu's pass back, and uh, I got a lucky break. So happy to uh, display that I can ship the ball. I think Kwesi might be a little too humble to be a striker. Honestly, he's got to own it a little bit more than that. That will conclude today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. I suggest you do the same tomorrow for another episode of Behind the Beard. Otherwise, you can expect to hear from Milty and I a little later this week. This has been Forge Daily with Mackenzie Barwell. If you like what you heard, please like, follow, subscribe, comment, and share. 